Yeah, I don't think there is no progress at all. I think that there is a mistake to start negotiating with Russia. There is no problem to, to, to keep a dialogue with Russia because this is a decision taken during the NATO summit in 2016 to defense, to deter and to maintain dialogue with Russia. But uh, one thing is to maintain dialogue and the other thing is to negotiate concessions to Russia. Let me remind you that a few weeks ago, Putin asked NATO to come back to the situation from 1997. Mm -hmm. So to cancel development of security architecture in Europe for the last 25 years. We cannot accept this situation. Putin is asking to close off something which is called the open doors to NATO to exclude any candidates for future membership in NATO. Putin is asking to remove all the NATO troops and weapons from the members, new members of NATO. And he is asking to reestablish something which is called the uh, uh, special Russian zone of influence in the in a part of Europe. That's uh, not democratic solution. This is like to come back to 19th century of Europe, where Europe was governed by the concept of powers, but not by the international institutions like OSC, like NATO or European Union. So I think that we have to reject that Putin blackmail, rather impose additional sanction if he escalates further the conflict in Ukraine, or other countries like Georgia or Kazakhstan. Well, the right approach is to stop imperialism and Russian aggression. We cannot accept the policy of appeasement. We cannot think what to give, what further give to or, or give up to. Yeah. To Putin, we cannot think about further concession, thinking that further concession will appease Putin, will satisfy, and somewhere, someday, he will decide that, well, enough is enough. No, we know from the history that policy of appeasement was uh, rather encouraging um, aggressors to go farther. Yeah. If we, if we give up right now uh, to Putin and we give, it, give them uh, Ukraine, Belarus, Kazakhstan and part of the territory of, of, of Europe, especially in the central yeah. part of Europe, he will go farther. Because let me remind you that several years ago Putin mentioned collapse of the Soviet Union was yeah. for him the biggest tragedy in the world and hmm. the biggest tragedy in the history of Russia. So he wants to reinstate the power of Russia to the level of Soviet Union, which in the 60s and 70s and 1980s, together with the United States, those two countries were ruling the, the world. You remember that we were waiting from one summit to other summit, yeah. from Reykjavik to Helsinki, from Helsinki to Geneva, because two states were ruling the whole world. We cannot accept to come back to such an undemocratic situation we used to have during the Cold War. Uh, maybe even more sanction than we imposed uh, in 2014. For instance, I think that we have to impose sanction and uh, give the price tag for the celebrities, for this part of Russian society which supports Putin and doesn't have any, doesn't feel any price. You know, business people, sports, cultural, scientists, they travel, they participate everywhere. Can you imagine then when Russian uh, young soldiers fight in Donbas or in Kazakhstan the same time the football team of Spartak Moscow plays in Madrid, we cannot accept situation. We cannot allow Russian scientists to get the same time when they are producing bombs to bomb Ukraine. So the Russian society has to be um, aware and, f and familiar with the price 
of continuation of this imperialistic policy of Putin. Well, so far the Ukrainian membership to NATO is not on the table, is not discussed, because Ukraine, they have their own domestic problems. They, with the domestic, economic, political reforms, judicial reforms, they of course have a problem with security problem, because a large part of Ukraine territory, yeah, Crimea, is yeah. absolutely annexed by Russia. Another part, like Donbas, uh, the Russians initiated rebellion against the central government of Ukraine. So first, uh, Ukraine has to solve this problem. And we can only help them to solve the problem by imposing sanctions, by stopping Russian aggression. If these problems are solved and, uh, and Ukraine will go through democratic changes and economic transition, then maybe in a few years we can come back to discuss uh, eventual membership in, in NATO, but ro not right now. But it doesn't mean that right now we're supposed to close the doors for NATO to anybody. Yeah. No, this is a principle of NATO alliance to keep the doors open for the future.